The following is a production of Phoenix Media. The views expressed do not necessarily represent those of the company or its advertisers and may contain language that's unsuitable for younger listeners. You know, out in Nevada near the silver mines, there's a kind hearted woman. She's looking so fine, always taking care of her community, bringing folks together is her cup of tea. She's out on the road and all over the web with a big smiling heart. It's about town, Deb. It's about town, Deb, and I'm so excited to be at Greenhorn Ranch in Quincy. Am I in California? Kind of. Or am I in Nevada? Maybe. <laughs> am I in California, Nevada? You're in California. I'm in California. I even got my cowboy hat on. And I am so excited to be here because this is the place you want to be. There's an amazing pool. There's horses. There's lots of stuff. And this is, like, you know, I'm going to tip my hat to you. My hat's a little big. I don't have a real cowboy hat on, so I'm going to tell you that up front. But we're excited to be here. I'm here with Jazzy Georgia. She is going to be my clock for me today. So you might see me looking over there. Um, number one, again, we are grateful to be at the Greenhorn Ranch in Quincy, California. And I am here with two incredible people, very patient people, <laughs> mind you. I have Laura, Cal- Laura, right? Did I get that right? Yeah, Laura. Okay. And you are, um, are you like our head wrangler? Head wrangler. Head wrangler. Right. We, I love that. Our fearless leader. Fearless leader, not just... So your last name is Callaway. That yes. totally sounds like a golf company. Yeah. No, I was no. I was thinking you sound like a cattle rancher. <laughs> yeah. I think it's more like a cattle rancher, um, but we're really really happy to have you here. And we have Joe. Look at you, Joe. Hey, hey. You got the little <laughs> cowboy stuff going on here. And um, what is your official title? You are the you're a wrangler too. I'm a wrangler. Yeah. So your last name is, I'm going to let you say it. Tom- Tomaselli. Tomaselli. Is that Italian? Yes. Ooh, we got an Italian Wrangler on hand. Spaghetti Western. Uh, oh, what does that mean? You like spaghetti? I love spaghetti. I love spaghetti. You do? How could you not like spaghetti? I love spaghetti. Actually, I had some spaghetti last night. Don't tell Georgia. I got cravings and I should have been eating at 10 o'clock at night. So I love my, love, she's shaking her head at me. Anyway, we would not be able to be here anywhere on location without our amazing sponsors. So I would like to thank Gratis Gives Processing, Hall and Rye Plastic Surgeons, Kim Surratt Law, Rail City, Sparks Casino, Wilderver Grill, and Pioneer Center for the Performing Arts. And as usual, phoenixmedia.us. Christian, I gotta tell you, because you know, About Town Dev keeps it real. We, uh, our internet wasn't the best for what I needed to do here. It'll be good when you're here, but for what I needed to do, Man, Christian was so patient with us. And these two Wranglers here, amazing. I'm very <laughs> grateful for their kindness and their hospitality. So I'm just going to start with, we. I don't know how many minutes we have in our first segment because we don't have Christian, but I'm going to go with Laura. So tell us how long you have been a Wrangler. Well, I'm fairly new here, but I've been a Wrangler for probably about 15, maybe 20 years of my life. She looks too young <laughs> for that. Really? Yeah, yeah. Been riding my whole life. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. Joe, what about you? Wrangler, Joe? (laughs) Well, I've been a Wrangler here for the last five seasons. And then before that, I worked here in the 80s. So I've been wrangling horses, and I was a packer for a while. What's a packer? Packer are the guys that take... uh, Hunting and fishing trips and Ooh. camping trips into the mountains and with mules. Wow. So I did that and, you know, and then I've been a horseshoer most of, most of the time. A horseshoer? Horseshoer, a farrier. Horse, a farrier. I'm going to be learning a lot about horses. <laughs> I have to tell you, when we pulled up here, I was like, oh my gosh, we pulled in the driveway and everywhere I looked was like, there's things to do, and I'm so excited. And there's a pool in this heat in the summer. <laughs> there's a pool, but the most and, a creek. and a, a creek. And a creek. Can you like dip your feet in the creek? You oh, dip your feet in the creek. I yeah. love that part. But the horses. Oh my gosh, how many horses are out here? We have 61 right now. Oh. Well, 65. 65 horses. Well, I told Jazzy Georgia that I want to spend a lot of time on the horses, but I also want to fly fish. So it's kind of like two totally different things. 
Oh, yeah. yeah. But you have to be able to regular fish if you're out there on your horse and you're in a, you know, doing a, <laughs> doing a wrangler thing, don't you? you got to catch your own food for the day. For you the can night. Joe does, I'm sure. get a horse and take <laughs> it out in the middle of a pond and fly fish off your horse. Do we get to do that? No. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I thought we got Sounds to like do fun, that. Though. I don't know. So um, how many miles, I don't know if you know, how many miles is it from, you know, Reno to here? Or maybe Jazzy Georgia could chime in. I'm trying to, it was not that long. It was like an hour and I feel like twenty minutes. Six, six, it was. Yeah, listen, you're around ninety yeah. miles. About away. ninety miles, it, yeah. Something like that. So really, it's a short drive to yeah. come over here and feel like you're in the wilderness and it's you're. A pretty drive. It is a gorgeous drive, mm-hmm. and I love all the trees and I love all of that. And I'm just like I'm just happy to get a break, and I love it. So do you have to wear a cowboy hat? <laughs> no. I'm just but saying. I it mean, it says in my contract. <laughs> now I just wear one. No, I mean, do I have to wear a cowboy hat when I'm here? You well, should. No, but I it should. looks good. <laughs> I think Everybody I'm wear, wear I, I have one hat. that's a little bit more snazzy. I'll be wearing that one, and I have to. Um, you know, I'm gonna. Since I'm being real here, I came in flip flops today. <laughs> I didn't have time to go home and change, so I will not be wearing. So flip flops aren't the best thing. Boots. Boots. boots like not tennis, shoes. not tennis shoes not boots georgia yep. has on tennis shoes <laughs> that's better I, than flip flops now does it have to be any kind of boot can you wear like a hiking boot you want a heel yeah a if you're gonna ride a heel. oh for riding the yeah. horses if you're gonna ride you want a boot that goes above your ankle with a heel okay i'm gonna be looking in the you know <laughs> blythe if you're listening i'm gonna take the the boots that you do not like that i'm gonna wear um because they're really comfortable but no i'm really excited to get packing and not just packing no you don't pack, when you're on a horse you're not pack packing means you have a gun is that what that means <laughs> that's one of the many i'm trying to figure this out I guess it depends on where you Poor if, Joe. If he's like, I don't know what to do with her. If you're in Reno and you're packing, I guess you got a gun. But if you're packing. If you're on a horse and you're packing, you probably you got, got a supplies. mule. You've got supplies. You've got camping supplies. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, I, anything I could ride, a horse, a mule, I'll be happy. But again, it's almost time for a first break. And we come back, we are going to be talking to both these wranglers. And they're going to be telling us a little bit about themselves, their stories, and all the cool stuff about being here, right here at Greenhorn Ranch in California, Quincy, California, by the way. And this hat's going to be bugging me, but here we go. This is going to be all the show. You're going to see me tipping my hat. So it's about town, Denver City Talk. We will be right back. Stay tuned. Now more than ever, family matters, and Surratt Law Practice has your family in mind. Kimberly Surratt and her team have been helping maintain healthy families through their holistic approach to adoption and surrogacy, child custody, estate planning, and more for over 13 years. Your family law concerns are in caring hands with Surratt Law. Schedule your private consultation with a compassionate Surratt Law Practice team member today by calling 775-636-8200 or visiting LawyersForFamilies.com. Surratt Law, where family matters. That'll be $73.11. Do you have a charity that I can donate it up to? You just did. But I didn't select any option. It happened just by using your credit card. We recently changed our payment processing to Gratis Gives, who not only saves our company a ton of money on processing fees, but also donates a portion of every purchase to a participating local nonprofit. Why doesn't every business do that? If they switch to Gratis Gives like we did, they can. Achieve real social change by contacting Gratis Gives at 855-464-7284 or online at gratisgives.com. Don't miss all the fun and excitement at the New Rail City Casino. Play over 40 new hot penny slots, plus double down during the party at the Pit Blackjack every Thursday through Saturday from 6 p.m. to 1 a.m. And join us for Bingo After Dark every Thursday through Saturday night for your chance to win up to 1,000 cash. When you've worked up an appetite, visit the new Ale House for delicious specials to tantalize your taste buds. Visit the new Rail City Casino today. New slots, new games, and more chances to win. This is Mario Andretti. You know me as a race car driver, but I'm also a Meals on Wheels volunteer. I've raced against the sport's biggest personalities, but I've never met more vibrant, amazing people than the seniors served by Meals on Wheels. You can make a difference by dropping off a hot meal and saying a quick hello. So, America, let's do lunch. Volunteer your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. This message brought to you by Meals on Wheels America and the Ad Council. People been saying to your friend, get a different face. And posting on their feed, they're super ugly. The things they say to them online are cruel and they're not true. So tell your friend, I'll stand up for you. Don't worry, I know what to do. 
being bullied online, you can be a witness and make a difference by letting the world know it isn't cool and by letting your friend know you care. Learn more at eyewitnessbullying.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Hope you enjoyed your meal. And I just want to say, he's lucky to have a brother like you. Lucky? Caring for my brother is far from easy. But he's a part of me, like my arms and legs, so I'll be his. No time for tired. Nothing can disable this love. He needs me, but I'm the lucky one, even though I need help now and then. If you're caring for a loved one, visit aarp.org slash caregiving for care guides and community. Support for your strength. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. You're listening to Phoenix Media. Listen live and explore more great shows at phoenixmedia.us. She's out on the road and all over the web with a big smiling heart. It's about town, Deb. My town, your town, or any town, this is About Town Deb presents City Talk. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. It's About Town Deb with City Talk, and I'm so excited to be at Greenhorn Ranch in Quincy, California. Oh, I'm shaking the thing. I better move my foot. Anyway, so excited to be here. I'm here with two amazing Wranglers. I didn't even know I'd ever get to hang out with not just one Wrangler, but two. So I have Joe over here. Hello, Joe. Welcome back. Hey, hey, how are you? Hey, hey, hey. Hey is for horses, you know. It is. <laughs> I don't know. I was supposed to say something about hay for horses. Oh. And then well, I got, <laughs> hay so is for hey, horses. So hey, hey, welcome. Then I've got Laura. I, I keep wanting to say Laura, so forgive me. It's okay. Laura. 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 So I am. So this segment we're going to focus on Laura, and Wrangler, hot, amazing Wrangler. But oh, before well, we, you. I, I want to know a little bit about when did you decide to be like? Like, do you just say when you grow up, I want to be a Wrangler? <laughs> Or how did it all start? And tell us a little bit about what it was like growing up on a ranch and all that kind of stuff. I don't know. You know, I think as a little girl, I actually grew up in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. So Mm. not super horse country. Mm -hmm. There are some. There's Davy out there and then Wellington, the big showing. Um, But yeah, actually, my dad used to just, I loved horses. I always did. And my dad used to stop at every roadside trail ride place on every family Uh. vacation we went to. My sister was allergic to horses. My mom's oh. not really an outdoor person, so they would go to a museum or something, and my dad and me <laughs> would go on a horseback ride every time. So he really encouraged that in me. And when I was 10 years old, uh, he found an advertisement for a horseback riding, all girls horseback riding summer camp in Georgia, which was, you know, in close, Georgia, the closest place we could get to from Florida, uh, called Valley View Ranch. And it's a horseback riding camp for girls. And I went there my entire life. I'm, from there on, from 10 years old on, I was a counselor there, and I grew up there. And, and that, I guess, is where I would say I started wrangling. That's where I started my wrangling career. That's way back. <laughs> what a, yep. Well, you still, she looks, she looks pretty young, so it hasn't been that far back. <laughs> it's been basically a long time, yeah. So then, being on the, so tell us a little bit about, this This is the Greenhorn Ranch. Yes. And you, do you actually, are you on site here all the time? Do you live here? I do your, live here. So tell us what it's like to live here and work here. Well, dangerous, <laughs> danger, danger. <laughs> it's, it's fun. It's awesome. I, I get to live uh, like right outside of the horse pasture, so oh. it's super wonderful. Waking up every morning, and the first thing I see is the horses oh. grazing and enjoying drinking out of the creek, drinking out of the pond we have there. Sometimes they're splashing each other, having fun. And then I got to get them all to pay attention to me and come into the barn area, which they don't always want to do. Oh. So then the work starts after a little bit of serene beauty watching them and then i gotta get them all going then you gotta get them going <laughs> yeah. so really so the, the last thing you the last thing you see at night are the horses then because you're you know you, you know are you putting them to bed in a sense <laughs> in, in, in the barn in. Right. i tuck them in with their tuck hay. Them in. last thing you see <laughs> is the dust <laughs> the dust yeah really the last thing you see is the dust as you send them out to pass here and then they're out for the night we usually release them oh so they don't come in and go in a barn at night Oh, no, they live out in their pasture. Oh, I yeah. thought horses go in a barn at night. Some horses go in a... Fancy horses yeah. go in a barn at night. But not these. <laughs> these are real cowboy horses. These are range horses. So they're outside at night. They are. Yeah. Yep. And they're okay. Under the stars. Wow. They love it. Yeah, they wouldn't want to it's, go in a barn. They're horses. Horses are animals of the elements. Yeah. So I like the, that. Most horses... If you gave them a barn to live in, they would rather be outside anyway. Yeah, oh, I love it. Yep. So what is your favorite part about um, working on a ranch? Probably that, you know, the fact that any given time I can just 
get up and go see all the horses anytime I want, you know? Sometimes you get caught up in your busy life as an adult, but then sometimes I'll just think, you know, what would eight-year-old Lara think Aww. about this? And she would think this is pretty cool, you know, all the I time. I like that getting eight. To, yeah. Yeah, you know, getting to wait any, any given time whenever I want. I have 65 horses at my disposal wow. to snuzzle their nose and feed them and scratch oh, their ears. And, so of course, I, ride them, I, I get to do a lot of snuzzling <laughs> yeah, here totally. the next year. That's days. part of the job is snuzzling. Right, Joe? I, she does that part of the job. <laughs> so do you snuzzle? Oh, a couple of horses. <laughs> oh, just a couple. But I only got a couple of horses that now. Snuzzled, uh, yeah. I'm, so I don't get equal, around. Yeah. He's not an equal opportunity uh, snuzzler. It's so... Is there something, is there a little story that you can share about maybe something <laughs> funny that's happened to this gal? Well, you know, this is our first season working together, but, uh, you know, she sort of proved herself on the first ride. Oh, proved her. So how did she prove herself? Well, she looked at this white horse that was out in the corral, and she said, that's a cute little horse. And the rest of us said, yeah, that's a great little horse. We love that little horse. <laughs> Nobody really told her that that horse wasn't real rideable. And she saddled the horse up, and we all went for a ride, and, and she learned about that horse. Yeah, sure Not, did. Nice <laughs> horse. Did she get we got, We have more work to do oh, yeah. on that horse. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so is that horse available to ride? Not yes. yet. Not yet. Oh, so it's been a we're, while. We're, we're working on her. Mm. Yeah. But she's coming along. She's a work in progress. Yeah. So I kind of have a similar story. Uh, about Laura? About me, I, I, I think I, I had the same lesson. I was I was um, probably like ten or eleven, maybe even not nine, ten or eleven. And every summer I'd go to Nebraska because my family has um, a ranch there, a farm. And so I would go from being a city girl in Southern California, Burbank. The day school got, I was like, "Come on, you're going to Nebraska. You're going to go to the family farm." And they had this beautiful big horse that was gorgeous and they had this other horse that they wanted me to ride and they said this is your horse and I'm like but I want to ride that <laughs> one the and they one. said this is your. I'm like okay fine so when nobody was looking uh -oh. I decided I'm going to get on I don't know how I even got on this big horse no saddle. I didn't even know what a saddle was probably I was young. I get on the horse and I'm like giddy up and oh. I like pulled I don't know what I don't know whether it was reins or they I did something and all I know is the horse was so mad at me it ran like into by where the barn was and scared all the chickens then it backed up and then it went way out you're still on the horse I'm on the horse <laughs> okay and right. it threw me off in a haystack oh, oh. that was nice that was, that was, at that least was in lucky. a haystack so <laughs> that was my experience and then they were all looking for me and the horse like left me like where they're like where'd she go and <laughs> I was probably, I don't know if I was crying, but I was a little, my, my feelings were, were hurt. I and knew you were that, eight? I was eight or nine. Oh, I man. was, I wasn't that old. I could have been, I, I was, I, I know I wasn't seven. I did, I know I didn't try to ride the horse my first visit to their farm. <laughs> so I had to, but they had, there's a lot of stories I had being on that farm when I thought I, I was a city slicker and I could just do all these chores and yeah. it's not quite so easy. That's why you ride the horse we tell you That's to ride. why you ride the horse you tell us to ride, right. yes. And um, not cricket. Yeah, so, <laughs> <laughs> not cricket. So I don't want cricket, yeah. Not so, yet, not yet. So what, what does your day look like here as a wrangler for you? Wake up early. What time them? is that? Uh, not too early, honestly. Uh, About 7, 6.30. Not that early. Not as early for you guys as for me. Right. He's got to drive all the way from Taylorsville. Uh, okay. So he's got an earlier day. <laughs> I pretty much just roll out of bed and go straight to the pasture. That's cool. Bring the horses in. Okay. And um, then, yeah, we, we make a ride list depending on how many guests are riding that day, who's riding what horse, what rides are going on, what wranglers taking the ride, where they're going to go, Ooh. what horses need training. Maybe we're going to stick an extra horse on the ride so they can get some oh, experience. Okay. Okay, that's cool. Yep, and then the rides start going out at uh, 9 o'clock. So mostly when we're here, because there's a lot of, the, my favorite part is being able to ride a horse. Yeah. So if I said my goal this trip is to learn to ride a horse, to go for the rides, and spend as much time as I can, will I have that opportunity? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And so will I, do I have to saddle up my own horse? No, we do that Ooh, part for you. Thank you. <laughs> I don't even think I could lift up a saddle. Well, we're happy to show you how to do that. <laughs> okay. I, I, I would. So do we get to learn how to like take care of a horse? Sure. We have a yeah. Horse 101 class. <gasps> special. So, so tell me about that. I want to do that. Well, lots of times we just take the people out into the pasture. 
with the horses and get them familiar with what the horse herd dynamics are like when okay. they're out there in the pasture yeah. with them. And then we also like to, on hot days, especially when like riding is just, just too too much temperature. So what do you do then? We'll bring the horses in and we'll get let everyone give them baths. Oh! Everybody likes giving baths. I bet baths. y'all get to do that because it's pretty hot out. Yeah. That's going to be really yeah. cool. Yeah. So there's just, right. there's yeah. lots of stuff for an well, experience. Campfire. We try to keep them small. Oh, campfire. <laughs> I don't know. To me, it's a fire and it's outside. <laughs> it's, it's I'm still learning. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if you could tell us one of your wildest stories that you've experienced working here. Me? Yeah. Working here? We're still, yeah, we're up. Or, it, I mean, it could be with one of the animals. It, it could be as you're teaching somebody archery or fishing. It, it could be a guest that was like me who didn't know anything and got bucked off a horse. I mean, what, what's what's the wildest story you could think about? Uh, I don't Joe, do you, Joe's the you wild could, man. Go ahead. I mean, what, what, you should have some guests no. about some rides with oh, Joe. My, and I bet you that... My the, favorite story, I can't <laughs> tell. Tell me it. Tell me it. Come on. <laughs> Uh, involves uh, yeah. going fast and yeah. um, probably a lot we, of we had a, a, my favorite story especially because the fellow just left is that that uh, back in the 80s there was a young kid that came with his family and uh, um, he was six years old well now he's coming back oh. here with his kids and his kids oh. are six and eleven pretty cute you know Pretty cute kids, pretty cute family, and uh, um, and they're wild. Yeah, and we wild. go we go on a lot of really good rides. With Douglas is a, is a really good rider, and uh, um, and so we get to see a lot of country that I don't get to see normally with the guests because I don't normally get the opportunity to ride those far trail. I love it, but you know. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Most of the stories that I have have to do with, you know, stuff that happens here on the ranch. The best ones, though, I save for the campfire. <laughs> I love it. You have to come to the campfire to hear the really good well, stories. Well, we are going to do that. It's almost time for our next break. When we come back, Joe is going to be t telling us some stories. And if you hear any, like, dingling, dangling, he's got spurs. That's those spurs. So we're going to be right back. It's about 10 Devil City Talk. Hang tight. Welcome to Calvin's Barbershop. You all got to see this. I don't even want to know what you're looking at on that phone. Well, you should. I was learning about the dangers of high blood pressure and that we need to get ours checked regularly. High blood pressure can increase the risk of heart attack or stroke, but this text program can help keep it at a healthy range. Just text Barbershop to 97779 to sign up. I'll get right on it as soon as I'm done with this baby panda video. <laughs> text Barbershop to 97779. A message from the American Heart Association and the Ad Council. That'll be $73.11. Do you have a charity that I can donate up to? You just did. But I didn't select any option. It happened just by using your credit card. We recently changed our payment processing to Gratis Gives, who not only saves our company a ton of money on processing fees, but also donates a portion of every purchase to a participating local nonprofit. Why doesn't every business do that? If they switch to Gratis Gives like we did, they can. Achieve real social change by contacting Gratis Gives at 855-464-7284 or online at gratisgives.com. I spend a lot of time in the backyard, and I'm the center of attention at summer barbecues. In 96, I made some of the tastiest s'mores. And in 09, it was me, your backyard fire pit, that accidentally started a wildfire when a summer breeze carried one of my embers into some dry brush. Spark a change, not a wildfire. Visit SmokeyBear.com, brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Only you can prevent wildfires. Hope you enjoyed your meal. And I just want to say, he's lucky to have a brother like you. Lucky? Caring for my brother is far from easy. But he's a part of me, like my arms and legs, so I'll be his. No time for tired. Nothing can disable this love. He needs me, but I'm the lucky one, even though I need help now and then. If you're caring for a loved one, visit aarp.org caregiving for care guides and community. Support for your strength. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. What if I told you that a tornado was going to happen tomorrow right where you live? That it would touch down at exactly 3.17 p.m. and I told you the exact path it would take. You would, of course, prepare. 
you would talk with your loved ones and you'd make a plan today. It's true, I can't tell you a tornado will strike tomorrow, but shouldn't you have a plan anyway? Go to ready.gov slash communicate and make your emergency plan today. Don't wait. Communicate. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. This is Mario Andretti. You know me as a race car driver, but I'm also a Meals on Wheels volunteer. I've raced against the sport's biggest personalities, but I've never met more vibrant, amazing people than the seniors served by Meals on Wheels. You can make a difference by dropping off a hot meal and saying a quick hello. So, America, let's do lunch. Volunteer your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. This message brought to you by Meals on Wheels America and the Ad Council. You're listening to Phoenix Media. Listen live and explore more great shows at phoenixmedia.us. You know that's what you said. Come on, let's have some fun with the About Town Deb. My town, your town, or any town, this is About Town Deb presents City Talk. Now, back to the show. Hey, it's About Town Deb. (laughs) Welcome back to our next segment. We are going to be talking Wrangler Joe right here. We are at Greenhorn Ranch in Quincy, California. And it's not that far from Reno, guys, if you're you're a local like me with Reno. But if you're listening from anywhere else in the world, Quincy, California, it's a quaint little town, easy to get to. You can fly into Reno Airport. Come on over, and I'm telling you, once you get here, you're not going to want to leave. You're going to want to enjoy the beauty and the sights and all the cool things that we get to do. And um, when we talk to Joe, I want you to share a little bit about the history of this ranch, because that's really important. We're all about storytelling, and I hear you're a good storyteller. So, Joe, tell us a little bit about you as Joe, the Wrangler, but Joe is the man, Joe is the person, and how you came about being here and doing this. Well, I came here the first time in... uh in uh, the late 70s just to visit some of the other cowboys that worked here they had a couple old guys that were here Uh, joe alexander was the head wrangler in those days and i used to have joe come out and help me with my horses i live about 45 minutes from here in taylorsville so he would drive over and give me a hand and then when i went to horseshoe in school um in the 80s um, I got a job here as the horseshoer oh and uh, and as a wrangler. And I did that for a couple of seasons, and then I started my own horseshoeing business. Wow. So I would come back here to the ranch to shoe horses, and then um, then I started singing at the, the campfires and the barbecues mm-hmm. and shoeing horses. <laughs> and, uh, and then as the years went along, I would always tease them and say, hey, if you ever need an extra Wrangler, give me a call. Oh. And one day, they gave me a call. I had just <laughs> retired from horseshoeing. Oh, my gosh. So, uh, Perfect timing. Yeah. I took a part-time job here, and it lasted about 10 minutes. And What? what? You mean 10 minutes then part-time? And 10 <laughs> minutes later, I was on full-time. There you go. So I was going to say 10 minutes part-time. <laughs> and now they can't get rid of me. So when you, you were, what, you know, when you were that little seven, eight-year-old, did you ever think this, what was your dream to be? Well, I was horse crazy as a kid, and uh, um, and see that's the that's the kind of the common thread between people like us that do this kind of work. You horse you're crazy. horse crazy as a kid, and you don't get over it. Ever. And uh, so I grew up back in Rochester, New York, and uh, um, w- when I grew up, they still had junk wagons with horses, <laughs> junk wagons, and stuff like that. So, but what's a junk? You like. Like a Rick, junk wagon, a wagon full you of put junk. junk in, and you just drive it around and or take it to the dump. There'd be like or? the junk guy would drive around and collect <laughs> junk and rags, and he had a horse with a horse. Yeah, and they still had stuff like that. So um, I was around a lot of horses as a kid, and uh, I had a, there was a farmer that n- lived near us that had a horse, and I started going over and and just getting on his horse and riding it around in his corral. But we, he didn't know about it. And I so, so you're a sneaky little Joe too. And I got a twin brother, so <gasps> oh, I, oh, did I you blame such, him? No, I oh. but I had an accomplice all the time, oh. and uh, um, and so as I grew up, I kind of got away from horses, but horses was always something that would we would do for recreation, and uh, 
and I just sort of gravitated to this area. I, I lived in this area and worked for the Forest Service for mm -hmm. 11 seasons before I started doing this kind of work. And, uh, um, and right around Greenhorn Ranch was part of the area that I worked in. So, so you're would, familiar with the Yeah, area. I was real familiar with the, a lot of the Plumas County area. And, uh, you know, Greenhorn back in the day, you know. I wanted to get wild. a job here, but my first wife wouldn't let me. <laughs> she thought it was too wild out here. Uh, I don't know did, about that. Did, I did guess mommy, I did with mommy Wrangler Joe on the ranch, it might be. <laughs> so. So, so the history of the ranch. So um, how long has it been here? And I think you might have mentioned it. And, and how, how have you seen it change over the years that well, you've been here? They started the ranch in 62, and it was pretty much a hunting and fishing okay. uh, endeavor um, that a fellow by the name of Reynolds started. And then he took on a partner named Murray Howard. And Murray was a developer, and he started getting the ranch developed they started building houses and selling lots. Um, in fact, it seemed like people would come up, they'd buy a lot, they'd build a house, and then they'd get a job at the Greenhorn. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> and that would happen a lot. So there was always a lot of people who lived on the Greenhorn working here. And uh, um, then in... Oh, I bet, I guess it's been about 25 years ago, maybe a little longer than that. Ralph and Trish Wilburn bought the ranch. And uh, when they bought the ranch, the ranch finally started to settle into getting the real feel of what the Greenhorn was all about. And uh, Trish and Ralph are still around. They come and visit once That's in a right. while. Cool. And uh, um, you couldn't find better people. Mm -hmm. So then... Uh, about four years ago, when um, the new group of, of folks bought the ranch from Ralph, because Ralph was getting up there in years and wanted to retire, um, the ranch changed quite a bit in that um, the field got younger. You know, we had younger owners, we got young wranglers. I'm the only old geezer on the, the place, old, it seems like. You're our you know? token old geezer. Oh, so. a token, oh, a token. Oh, a token. We can't get rid of you. They, you know, <laughs> I came here to work. They sent all the old wranglers out to get uh, all out the... Out to pasture. Right, they, they sent the young wranglers out to get CPR training just to watch me. Oh, stop <laughs> it. That's not nice. I love yeah. it, though. <laughs> but... Uh, now that uh, Steve Harvey and Peter and David and Eric, all the guys that are involved in the ranch now, um, they're great guys. They, they've got a different vision for the ranch, but, you know, a, a guest ranch, especially one that's been here as long as it has, has a, has a life of its own, as well as the vision that the owners have. So... We've got people that have been coming here for a long, long time, and that adds to why the ranch is the way it is, because everybody brings their part of it into the mix, you know, and uh, wranglers, the guests, the owners, the, the horses. horses. The horses. Yeah, the horses. The horses, <laughs> the horses have their own <laughs> fan club. I mean, there's... Oh, I bet. There's people that, when they make their reservation to they come here... They pick a horse. They want to know if their horse is going to be here. Oh. Is Wiley still here? Right. That's the number one. Right. Oh. Can I tell ride me about Wiley. Can I ride Blackjack? Oh, there's a Blackjack. <laughs> and there's Wiley and Surprise. And what about we Trigger? Have a, Tri oh, there's a Trigger? <laughs> I want to ride Trigger. Yeah, we have a Trigger. <laughs> and uh took me up until this year to figure out who Trigger was and who Slugger was because yeah. they look so much alike. Oh, they maybe, do. Maybe they're twins like your twin. Yeah. And, uh, um, the the ranch has a real way of sort of charting its own direction because like last year we had that huge fire and, oh yeah so tell us how and, that and even though with covid and all that stuff going on the ranch was doing pretty good we were getting into the swing of things everybody was really enjoying themselves and then everything stopped because of the fire and that was it for the season. And uh, Steve was up here 
working with the fire crews and Ralph was down here working with the fire crews and they did an amazing job. They didn't lose a single Amazing. Yeah. Mm. What do you always say, Joe? You always say, you have this saying about the greenhorn. You always say the greenhorn is always going to be the greenhorn. Yeah, the greenhorn. <laughs> no matter what. That- the greenhorn has a life of its own, yeah. you know. Well, that's what I and, uh, I like about it. But I bet the stories. Now, is there a story that you can, I mean, you know, because you, you're the storyteller, right? Uh-huh. At night. Can you can you give us a sample of what it would be like to, like, right right now, if I said, okay, everybody out there listening, you're at, you're at a campfire, and can you tell oh, us just God. a short story? The fire's going, you have a little bit of whiskey, you know, because we have two minutes for, you have a minute so, for a short story. All right. We do a, a, a little mini rodeo. Okay, and, this uh, is, this is, it's okay. We got the, we got Wranglers here and the Wranglers, so do, tell your story. Keep so going. we do a little mini rodeo and uh, um, a lot of times people come down to the corral and they're a little bit nervous about riding in the mini rodeo. You know, we do barrel racing and pole bending and stuff like that. And if the and if the guests are interested in doing that, we'll do that for them um, one day a week. Well, this fellow came down to the corral and he said, "Oh, I'm deathly afraid of horses. I'm scared, but I'm with a group of people, and I don't want to look like a chicken in front of my friends." So. Mm. I need a really dead horse. <laughs> Not dead. You mean a slow horse? No, he said I need a really dead horse. So that morning, a horse had died, which Aww. happens sometimes. And uh, so I said, "Okay, well, I got just the horse for you." I I said, "Come with me," and I brought the guy around the back of the barn, and I showed him the horse, and I said, "Do you want to ride him this way, or should I throw a saddle on him for you?" And uh, that's my favorite Greenhorn story. That's your favorite Greenhorn (laughs) story. Well, we're going to leave it with that story, and we're going to take our another break. We're going to come back for our final segment. We're going to do some fun facts, and I want you to tell a little bit more about what you could do here when you're staying here before we get to the fun facts. So it's About Town Deb with City Talk. We're at the Greenhorn Ranch in Quincy, California. Wrangler Joe right here. (laughs) We'll be right back. Don't miss all the fun and excitement at the New Rail City Casino. Play over 40 new hot penny slots, plus double down during the party at the Pit Blackjack every Thursday through Saturday from 6 p.m. to 1 a.m. And join us for Bingo After Dark every Thursday through Saturday night for your chance to win up to 1,000 cash. When you've worked up an appetite, visit the new Ale House for delicious specials to tantalize your taste buds. Visit the new Rail City Casino today. New slots, new games, and more chances to win. Now more than ever, family matters, and Surratt Law Practice has your family in mind. Kimberly Surratt and her team have been helping maintain healthy families through their holistic approach to adoption and surrogacy, child custody, estate planning, and more for over 13 years. Your family law concerns are in caring hands with Surratt Law. Schedule your private consultation with a compassionate Surratt Law Practice team member today by calling 775-636-8200 or visiting lawyersforfamilies.com. Surratt Law, where family matters. Keyboard Cat, Hamilton the Pug, and Toast Meets World. These are some of the Internet's most beloved pets. And they all have one thing in common. Their stories started in a shelter. Start your story. Adopt a dog or cat today. Visit theshelterpetproject.org to find a pet near you. Training that pet to play the keyboard, that's optional. Start a story. Adopt a shelter or rescue pet today. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Ad Council. Okay, what are you wearing right now? Nothing. That's right. So mommy's going to teach you how to dress yourself. Underwear always comes first. Name tag at the back, then pants, then shirt. Get the first button in the right hole or you have to start all over. Socks going first, then shoes right on right, left on left. With shoelaces, just take the ends, cross them over, switch the loops. The rabbit goes down the hole, pull tight, and left with bunny ears. Got it? Why are your pants on your head? Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day, making sure they brush their teeth is easier, and it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. Visit 2 min 2 xorg to find out more. A message from the Partnership for Healthy Mouths, Healthy Lives, and the Ag Council. How's it going? I'm having a stroke. Are you going to shake my hand? I'm having a stroke. 
Wow, you're not even moving your arm. I'm having a stroke. When someone is having a stroke, they may not be able to say it with words, but their body language will tell you loud and clear. Look for fast. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911 immediately. Know the sudden signs. Spot a stroke fast. Visit strokeassociation.org. Brought to you by the American Stroke Association and the Ad Council. The storks are bringing me a baby brother. We can do this together. All right, let's go. Storks know how to keep kids safe. Do you? What? Oh my gosh, you don't know. <gasps> I know. You don't. <laughs> oh man, you laugh when you're uncomfortable. <laughs> no. Making sure your child is in the right car seat is one of the steps to safer travel. I will rock this. You will rock this. To know for sure that your child is in the right car seat for their age and size, visit safercar.gov slash the right seat. Cool, cool, cool. Very cool, very cool. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. You're listening to Phoenix Media. Listen live and explore more great shows at phoenixmedia.us. Ready to help from her toes to her head. Just give her a shout. Call about town, Deb. My town, your town, or any town. This is About Town Deb presents City Talk. Now back to the show. It's About Town Deb with City Talk, and I am excited to be here at Greenhorn Ranch in Quincy, California. I got two amazing Wranglers. I have Joe right here. Hello, Joe. Hey, hey. Hey, I love a hey, hey. That's and then I now. have Laura here. Do I get a hey, hey? Hey, hey. Hey, hey. <laughs> so we have been having a really good time chatting away and talking about some stories, talking about horses, talking about the history of this beautiful ranch, guys. So you really, really, this is the best time. You want to come out here and get away from your cell phones, mind you. I have no reception on, <laughs> yeah. I can text and do that, but that's a good thing. Every now and that's then we, we need to turn. A very on. good thing. Yeah. It's a very yeah. good thing. Um, so... Just so we're at front here, you know, I like to be real on About Town Dub. We are recording this today because I'm going to be back here next um, Monday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So when you're watching this, I will have already been here for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So I'm going to talk to both these Wranglers, and I want them to tell me what is my what are our days going to look like when we're here, and how do we go about signing up? How do we go about picking out what we want to do, what we want to learn? Who wants to go first? <laughs> I'm going to put you on cricket and I'm going to send you on a ride with Joe. Put me on cricket. <laughs> oh, oh, you mean I'm just going to get on a horse and he's... <laughs> okay. No, oh, kidding. cricket's the one that... <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm going to be on cricket. Yeah. And I'm going okay. to send you with Joe. The okay. cra- crazy Joe the ride. The crazy Joe ride. Okay. Yeah, totally. So you said you wanted the full experience. I want the full experience. <laughs> so if you're thinking about going to... Um, so is this a dude ranch is what they would call it or is it what what do you officially call it i keep saying a dude ranch it's a guest ranch a guest you know, ranch. we don't like to refer to the dudes as dudes it's because <laughs> a lot of people that come here aren't dudes I'm not a dude they've yet. been coming here a long time you know okay I, that seat so the know, guest ranch it's a guest ranch because you'll be treated like as family right and, and some people Yes. <laughs> they don't they want to hang out by the swimming pool. So. Yeah, I think I know They don't even get be... into the dude kind of circle. Yeah. So really there's there's more I mean it's not just about coming out here and like for me the horses. Right. You can come out here and just enjoy the beauty and the totally. pool and the quiet and totally. get a book and just relax and unwind. Oh yeah. yeah. So if you're so you're listening out there like I want to experience that. Tell us yeah how we go about it, and what to expect from the moment we check in. <laughs> well, as we were saying, there, there's lots of other activities, yes, too. Yes, so let's share about that. Horses are, you know, priority for me, for Joe, for a lot of for people me. who come here, yeah. But we also have e-bikes that you can ride all over the place, which are pretty cool. I actually, uh, they're sketchier to me than the horses because I'm not a bike person. I, I but if you're a bike person, that's cool. I love the bike. <laughs> I'm going to try, try that's an e-bike. That's my new thing. It's like... It's <laughs> I like, didn't know that. So... <laughs> You heard it here first. <laughs> they wanted to find out if somebody who knows nothing about an e-bike and never rides a bicycle could do it. Could do it. So they came down to the crowd and they <laughs> and got said, "Hey, Joe." Yeah. And uh, <laughs> and I love it. It's okay. Like, well, that says a lot. Like, That's good if that. I can ride an Wrangler e-bike, Joe. anybody yeah. can ride an e-bike. Totally I love it. I love it. I did take my spurs off though. The spurs are. What's hope. that? I've got spurs that dingled. How do you say that? Dingle dangle. <laughs> No, Deep. jingle jangle. <laughs> jingle jangle. The, the jingle dangle is at the other part of the herd. <laughs> I, 
had a feeling. I knew that was. I, I, mean, I, knew, I knew that. Yeah, okay, so. <laughs> So we got Keep the e-bikes. Keep the spurs on. You got the e-bike. Okay. We got the e-bike. We also have skeet shooting, which people oh. really enjoy. A lot of people haven't gotten a chance to do that before. I've never so. done that. Yep. Oh, well. Axe not- throwing. Oh, yep. I've done axe yeah, throwing. That's throwing. pretty fun. That amazes me. Yeah. <laughs> people pay to throw axes. Yep. We've got yeah. archery. 3D archery. So do you have to be pretty strong to do... Like, are you are you holding a real arc? Yeah, well, yeah, it's a real bow. But they, okay. there's different levels. They've okay. got the compound bows, okay. you know, really go hard. And then they've got, you know, some for kids. Okay. They've got all levels out I'm there. I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. And then there's also um, fly fishing. We've got fly, I want to do fly, fly fishing. fishing. Yeah. If you've, I've, I've the, actually haven't. I don't get what? a chance to chime in the other activities. Even with the horses them. all the time. Yeah. I haven't even tried the e-bikes. Like, like uh-huh. Oh, you should. I've done the hatchet throwing. Yeah. I wasn't great. Can't be good at everything. <laughs> okay, so so when you get here, you check in. Yeah. And then when you check in, then at what point do you sit and go, I want to do this, this, this. And, and I know every day there's different schedules yep. of what's yep. happening. So you pick what you want to do. Mm-hmm. There's daily sign-ups. So you there walk you go. in the office and there's daily sign-up sheets. So you sign up for the activities that you want to do for that okay. day. The ride, you pick uh, if you want to go on the advanced ride, the lope ride, the walk trot ride, or the walk ride. And then there's also days where we have wagon rides, so you can sign up to go on the wagon to go out. That's to fun the, too. Yeah, the wagon. Oh yeah, wagon the dinner is cookout fun. and the lunch cookout. And oh. then you also can sign up for your skeet shooting or your archery. Or so your, when you say lunch or dinner cookout, uh, you're yeah. where you're not eating dinner in a place in a room. Uh, not normally we eat dinner in the Chuck House every day. A Chuck House. Yeah, the Chuck House. We eat Love breakfast, house. lunch, and dinner in there. <laughs> uh, but then Tuesdays and Thursdays, Tuesday we have a lunch cookout ride, and Thursday we have a dinner cookout ride, and that's where you either ride your horse your wagon or your e-bike to a destination along the creek. And well, I'm excited. Yeah. And so we'll that'll be Tuesday because we're going to be Tuesday. Yeah. So we'll be doing that. Right. And um, we'll, we'll have to pack you out there. We'll pack you out there. What do you mean you're going to pack me? <laughs> you're going to put me on a mule? They're going to put me in a mule. <laughs> No, we, we don't have any what more. What do you mean you're going to pack me? The cook, you pack the me? cook's pack their own. They got a truck. They I'm bring it so out there confused. with you. <laughs> All I know is this. We'll put you on a horse. Yeah. I want to be on a horse. A now, nice horse. You know what's going to be funny? I've been saying I want to ride a horse, ride a horse, ride a horse, and do that, and watch me go, I'm done. <laughs> I, I don't think so, because I was that, I always, I, I, I'm not, I think I've only ridden the horse like in the little, you know, when you're a little, a corral. the yeah. corral where they That's go okay. in a circle. Okay. And I, I may we'll have gone on a horseback ride way back when in my younger days. Well, well we have horses that are perfect for somebody like yeah, you. Yeah, I'm excited. I'll take yeah. care of you. For I'm excited for, yeah. for that. Yeah. For... And so dinner time, and I also heard something about in the evenings. Is there, like you said, the, the, the storytelling. We do storytelling and, and campfires. And you're also a songwriter, correct? Yeah. So do you, are you, do you sing here as well? Yeah. So do we and, get to hear you on Monday or Tuesday night? Monday, Monday night, night. I'm, so, I mon- play t- on Monday night and Thursday night. So Monday <laughs> night, when I'm here next time, I will be hearing you sing right. and tell stories. And I read somewhere there's a whiskey tasting. <laughs> Did right. I hear that We've wrong? We've got whiskey. But is there a whiskey tasting? There's always a whiskey tasting. <laughs> there's always a whiskey tasting. <laughs> or is it like we just have whiskey? Can we? Oh, can no, you, can they you? do have whiskey tasting. I yeah. thought I heard that. Yeah. I mean, you so know. when people come here, like, what do you bring? What Like, do you just bring your, do you need to bring... Beach you want to, towels or if you I, want to ride, please bring jeans. You can't ride in yoga pants. Please don't ride in yoga pants. Can you ride in shorts? <laughs> no. You have to have full coverage pants and, and these? Boots. Uh, yeah, these are good. On. These okay. are good. And, and boots. boots are what, good. what about yeah. like if you don't have boots, we have boots for you to borrow. Oh, there you go. So, so at the rodeo, if you're back there back with the horses, you have to wear long sleeves. Do you need to wear long sleeves here? It's mostly for sun protection. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We're just out in the sun all day, so. I'm not sure why the rule for like a regular PRCA rodeo is you have to wear they, long sleeve shirts, yeah. but it's just, it's like you have to have a long sleeve shirt and a cowboy hat. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But I think those rules just go back to the old days yeah. of, okay. of that kind of stuff, you know. So basically, all you got to do is you can go on the website. There's a website, yep, right? Yep, you yep. can go on the website, and that is greenhornranch.com. Pretty simple. Go on the website. You can get the phone number. You can call. But I'm telling you guys, if you want to have um, a family gathering, you want to have a girls' weekend or a couples' weekend or just a week off by yourself, this is the place to come. And I'm telling you, there's a beautiful pool out there. <laughs> I know that Jazzy George is like, I am going to be in that pool. Um, it'll be really, it's just nice to get away, but I, so my picks are the horseback riding, I want to try fly fishing, and I may try to do the archery. 
Yeah. I'm not very coordinated, so I don't want to hit somebody, but I think I might. Well, the archery range is a long ways from the horses. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't want to hit a horse either. No, so that's kind of what I want to do, but I'm more, I'm just, just as excited to be able to spend time with friends and with, to meet new friends and yeah. hang out with you guys, and I want to hear the stories. It's really about the stories for me, and I love music. And did I hear something that you also write for a band? Yeah, I'm the songwriter in uh, in a band called uh, uh, Last Man Last Man Standing. Standing. I like that. And we started the band a long time ago, w- way before the TV show came out, and and uh, and so then for a long time we were thinking we we're going to change the name of the band because because of the <laughs> Cause TV of the- show, but uh, you know. As as the world turns, you know. Kinda, as, as the world turns, <laughs> we decided to keep. You're the, too young to know that. But. We we decided to keep the name of the band the <laughs> way it is, and uh, um, we've all been playing together for a long, long time. So, if you ever get a chance to hear us, we're we're really good. Okay, <laughs> so we only have two jump. minutes left. So I'm going to give you this. Ah, yes, Laura. Laura. And pick a question you want to ask me, and let's see if I know the... Oh, see, because yeah. I, I have the questions, but no answers. You have the answers, or you have... I can't peek. I don't, but I remember what they were. No, but do you know that... Oh, no, but you have... Where'd they go? What I remember what they were. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Can you make up the one, two, yeah. or three? Okay, got okay. it. <laughs> well, here, these are the questions. Oh, we found them. Okay, here okay. we go. Okay. Question one. Let's get... <clears throat> what is an average weight of a horse? 12,000 pounds. Hey, that's not a bad guess. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. What was it? Yeah, Twelve thousand I mean, pounds. Oh, not twelve. <laughs> <laughs> that's I'm a thinking, draft horse. I was thinking <laughs> one thousand two hundred pounds. Like what? Like okay, numbers okay. aren't my okay. thing. Okay, give so me another 12, question. Twelve hundred. Give me another <laughs> question. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, how many acres is the Greenhorn Ranch? Fourteen hundred acres. No, fourteen thousand acres. We have a minute left. Fourteen thousand acres. It's about six hundred. Six hundred. 600. Okay. Yeah. You have one, one more. Whatever question you guys, you want to make up a question for me? What side of the horse has the most hair? The left side. The back side. The outside. Oh, what? That's like his favorite one. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so if you want to know what side of the horse has the most hair, do you want to check out the horses? You come here and you chat with these Wranglers because it is about town dev at Greenhorn Ranch, Quincy, California, greenhornranch.com. Hello, Grandma Bean at Glenda. I always say hello, but I don't want to not I don't want to forget to say it. I love you guys. Love the hospitality. Next week I'll be telling you all about my trip.